Rare voice is the phone in my home. It's the one I can afford. Rare voice gives me lower LD. And you know it gives me more. I get local calls for free. And I can win big prizes too. Rare voice makes my family rejoice. Rare voice is for me. Your new home phone is here. Sign up for Rev Voice today and you can win great weekly prizes and a brand new Honda CRV from Nassau Motor Company. Get Rev Voice home phone for as low as $14.99 a month. Call us at 601-8992 or visit us online at CableBahamas.com slash Rev Voice. Rejoice this Christmas with Rev Voice. As another traffic fatality is recorded, police say they're clamping down on motorists. We have seen almost a 80% increase in the amount of citations issued. The government wrapping up its white paper on tax reform. We expect to be a wide-ranging reform. We're going to put it out for discussion amongst the public. It's the flu season. We'll tell you how to protect yourself from the virus. And in flu, flu season, you tend, you should shake hands less. Plus, baby miracle christened this morning. We realize it is indeed a miracle. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Welcome to NB12 Weekend. Thanks for spending your Sunday evening with us. A young woman is the 43rd person to be killed in a traffic accident this year. Friends and family identified the victim as Rashawn Smith. We're told that Smith was a 2007 graduate of St. Augustine's College. According to police reports, Smith was the passenger of a blue 1997 Volkswagen that was involved in an accident with a silver Chevy Avalanche at Spikenard and Carmichael Roads. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Not many more details were given except that both male drivers of the vehicles were taken to hospital and their conditions are unknown. Police say they're investigating and release information as it becomes available. Meantime, an outpouring of sympathy on social media as Bahamians expressed condolences and shared memories of the victim. Messages like, sleep on Shawnee, take your rest, we love you, but Jesus loves you best. May you continue to rest in peace with the angels in heaven, gone too soon. And keeping the Smith family in my prayers were posted on Smith's and family members' Facebook pages this morning. NB12 understands that Smith was 23 years old. A man crashed into a home on Hospital Lane this afternoon and, according to eyewitnesses, crashed into a green taxi van when he attempted to flee the scene. Residents told us that the taxi driver was taken to hospital. Fortunately, no one was in the house at the time of the incident. Police were not on the scene when NB12 arrived to confirm the information. However, the eyewitnesses say residents of the area attacked the man after his dark blue Ford Explorer came to a stop. We're told that officers arrived and took the driver away from the scene. We were not able to reach any traffic officials up to news time. Just last week, three men who were in a Honda Accord were attacked. One of them stabbed after the driver reportedly struck and killed 13-year-old Calvin Morley. Officer in charge of the Road Traffic Division, Superintendent Ken Strawn, said officers were very concerned about the behavior of the attackers. Well, with an increase in traffic fatalities this year and an increased number of motorists expected to hit the streets this holiday season, police say they're not taking any chances. Our Jasmine Bonamy has more in this report. So far this year, more than 40 traffic fatalities have been recorded, and that has prompted officers from the traffic division to crack down on violators. Police statistics indicate that 17 pedestrians, 7 motorcyclists, and 17 other motorists were killed so far this year. In addition, there were two hit and runs. It's a worrying trend for police, according to head of the traffic division, Superintendent Ken Strawn. Yes, we have seen um, a rise in some of these injury accidents taking place out there. But I can also say to you, 
our enforcement efforts have seen a tremendous growth throughout the entire 2012. Strawn says the changes to dozens of roadways under the road improvement project has prompted police to devise a plan of action, which started with the back-to-school rush. That same plan is being utilized for the holiday season. Strawn says that the crackdown has resulted in nearly doubling in citations handed to offending motorists. We have seen almost a 80 percent increase in the amount of citations issued year-to-date in comparison to last year. The police have been busy um, manning the roadworks. We've been out there all through the summer period trying to get you to and fro. We've been out there all through the school period trying to get you to and fro. But the adjustment is here. And it's incumbent that all of us, all of us, play our roles. Meantime, in hopes of creating safer environments for motorists and pedestrians, the Traffic Planning and Policy Unit has teamed up with the Road Traffic Department. The unit will also provide technical assistance to the Ministry of Works and advice on traffic flows, congestion, road crossing, unfavorable road conditions, and whether adjustments should be made to the speed limits. Their findings could lead to changes in legislation, according to Strawn. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. In other news, the government planning to meet this week to discuss ways to lower energy costs and complete the white paper on tax reform. This after Moody's credit rating agency downgraded the country, saying the economic outlook remains negative. Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis talks about what will be discussed this week. We are in the advanced stages. We almost completed our discussion paper on um, tax reform, reform of the tax system, which will... Um, we expect to be a wide-ranging reform. We're going to put it out for discussion amongst the public. The government will not raise taxes or introduce austerity measures as a result of a credit rating downgrade by the international agency. However, tax reform is one of the ways the government hopes to strengthen its balance sheet and stabilize debt levels. Give an idea of the pros and cons of the different methods of taxation and um, put forward a recommendation that the government would like to explore and get feedback from the community, particularly the business community, the Bahamian public as well. The government will also have to discuss what the next move will be after a decision is made on which particular tax reform the country will go forward with. That will also be included in the working paper. And there's a uh, lead time in terms of making sure that the public is properly educated, making sure that those businesses, for example, who would be affected, affected um, have enough time to educate themselves. On Thursday, Moody downgraded the country's credit rating from A3 to BAA1. Halkita said the government has to do a better job of debt management and revenue growth. He said the government will lay out some of the steps that it will take to manage the problem in the mid-year budget. More details are emerging concerning the construction of the Leonard Thompson International Airport in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. Transport and Aviation Minister Glennis Hannah-Martin recently admitted that construction has been hindered by logistical and design issues. In the House of Assembly on Wednesday, Hannah Martin gave a detailed status update on the report. But in a more recent interview, she told NB12 that there were several structural issues with the airport that included the length of the runway as well as lack of power to the air traffic controller's tower. There are a number of issues, logistical issues, that have emerged um, coming out of that construction. Um, and I will be able to tell the Bahamian people what our findings are. But one of, just for an example, the air traffic control tower has no electrical power. Things of that nature have caused the whole, the, 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 the opening of that airport to be set back. While Hannah Martin admitted that the airport is aesthetically pleasing, officials are concerned that the facility is not sustainable and would put a drain on the public purse. Last year, under the Ingram administration, Fess Construction Company was awarded a $27.3 million contract for the construction of an international terminal, air traffic control tower, and fire crash rescue facility at the Marsh Harbor Airport.